Right, so in this demonstration, we're going to show you another way to show hierarchical data. Um, we showed you already how to do a tree representation like that, where we see department and employees in each one. What if you want to actually have a full table of all the employees in each department? That's what we're going to do today. Now, this demonstration relies on some of the code that we developed for this demo. So in the description of this video, you would find a link to the other blog where you can find this information. But overall, what we did here is we created a JavaScript function that creates an array data provider for us. Okay, Passing into it information we got from a REST call um, in one of our actions. So we basically called the REST service. We use the expand function to get also the details, not just the master records. Then we pass this information over to our JavaScript function, returning a structure of a tree that we put into a variable called our tree, which the UI is hooked up to. So if you look at the property of the tree component, the data is inside the our tree variable. Also, if you look at the console of your application when you're running it, when you're creating the tree, you would see that we're putting into the our tree variable over here, this type of array with the tree data. We have five records. Each one is a department. We have the department field and the ID field, and each one has an employee collection. Inside the employee collection, you can find information about employees. All right, so now let's see how to organize this in a different type of display on our page. To do that, we're going to use a for each component. A for each basically loops over an array of records and show this uh, array. You can see that by default, we assign to it just static values. We're going to instead hook it up to our tree variable. Okay, so this is now hooked up to the same set of data. And then each side, each area over here, we're going to use a panel component. So this one would separate each row. And inside the panel component, we can pick up, for example, a heading, put it over here and hook it up to the current data. And specifically, we want to hook it up to the department field. So that would show us the department. Okay. Now, inside each department, we want to have another panel. So again, we'll pick up the panel component, put it, let's say, in here. Okay. And inside the panel, we're going to put a table like that. Now, you might find that at some point your UI disappears, and that's because there's an issue with synchronization of fetching the records and showing them on the page. Okay, so the for each might be actually executing before we completed the fetching of the records. So to solve this, let's switch over to our structure over here. This is the bind for each. And by the way, all the code that we created is still here, including the table. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take this bind for each and we're going to surround it with an if variable. And this if variable, we're going to hook it up to a new variable. I will call this one, for example, I'm ready. And this is going to be a Boolean variable. Okay. And um, let's set this variable to have a default of false. So by default, we're not ready. And we're only ready to show this once we finished fetching all the data and populating our tree variable. So after we assign this, we can do another assign operation. And in this assign, we're going to put into the I'm ready, the value of true. All right, so now let's switch back to our visual representation of the page. And now you can see the table shows up properly, okay? Because we organized the order of things that are happening. All right, so next we want to bind this table to the set of variables that are or the set, the array that is related to this department. Now, a table needs a data provider to be based on. Uh, we're going to use an array data provider. Uh, we need to generate this array data provider dynamically for each one of the table. Now, to do that, we're going to use the same concept of a JavaScript function that generates the data provider, 
based on an array that it gets. So we're going to copy the function that we called build3, switch it to be build adp. We can ignore this um, line of console log. We don't need this. And then instead of returning a, da a tree data provider, we want to return a normal array data provider. You can get the code for this from the Jet Cookbook from the basic table uh, sample. They are using array data provider here. So if you go over to the JavaScript code, here's the line that actually creates this data provider. So let's copy this over and replace this line with the line we just copied. All right, we need to do a few updates. We're basing our array data provider on the my array that we're passing in. Our key attribute is the ID and we are not actually using implicit sort, so we're going to remove this one. Um, there's still something that is going to be missing and that's the definition of array data provider. And um, you can see this in, again, the code over here. We have this part that brings the data provider and then the definition here. So we're going to implement the same thing here in Visual Builder, put this one, and then take this definition and put it here. So this would get our code to a status where it passes and works properly. So now we have a function that builds our ADP based on an array that we're passing into it. And we're going to hook our table to that function. Okay, so we have the table over here. And the source of the data over here is not just going to be current data because that's not enough. We actually need it to be based on the dynamically generated array data provider. So here's our table code and we're going to remove what we currently have in the data. Instead, we're going to use a page code insight to get to our page function and to the build ADP function. And into this ADP, we're going to pass in our dollar current data. Okay. And then if you remember, if we looked over here, the structure inside our data, we have an employees collection. Okay. And inside it, the items is the array. So we're going to paste employees collection and then add items. This gets us to the array of employees, passing it into the build ADP. This creates an ADP and populates our table. So if we switch back to the design view, you can now see that various rows here, various department has different numbers of employees. All right, so next we want to actually show specific data. So in the data for the table, okay, we're going to add columns to the table. Let's start with one column and set this one to point to the ID of the employee, like that. And you can already see we're showing here the ID for the various employees. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a few other columns. So let's add two more columns, one and another one. Okay, uh, the first one can be, for example, the name of the employee. Like that. And the next one can be the salary of the employee. Oops. And again, remember that the name of the field match, match the uh, field that you're actually fetching. So this is it. Now we have the table all in place. We can um, fine tune our table. For example, we can set it to have a grid look and feel like that. It looks a little bit more professional. And then we can run our application. Can close the console over here. And our page shows up. We have each department with the employees that are working in it displayed in a nested table scenario. 